In the not so distant future, the world is going to be a very different place. China is becoming the world's biggest economy. We would expect China to overtake the United States pretty quickly, perhaps around the turn of the decade in 2030. Its share of global trade actually increased at a record clip. China's meteoric economic rise is unprecedented in history. There's something called China time, where everything happens so much faster. The reality of the last 40 years has been a radical shift from agrarian poverty at the end of the Mao era to something which looks like a comfortable middle-class life. Opening up to market capitalism in the late 70s kick-started a new era. The trappings of Western capitalism are now ubiquitous in China, but so too is the iron fist of the state. While it undoubtedly comes at a cost, this central control has allowed Beijing to nurture long-term economic strategies. China has transformed itself into a green energy powerhouse that produces most of the world's solar panels, wind turbines and lithium-ion batteries. By 2030, China is poised to grab the lion's share of jobs and wealth as the world gradually transitions away from fossil fuels. And it's become fertile ground for electric car makers. At GM, we believe China will be one of the main epicenters in the globe of the adoption or the transformation towards electrification of the vehicle. China is rewriting the rules of global capitalism. Can the rest of the world keep up? You know, the president is concerned that China is far ahead of us. It is time for that to shift around. While China has become a leader in multiple green industries, the progress it has made in electric vehicles, or EVs, is unparalleled evolution of the automobile in the 20th century caused an economic revolution in the United States. After losing out to international car makers for decades, China has learnt to leapfrog the combustion engine. The country is already home to the planet's largest market for EVs by sales, and it still has room to grow. Electric cars account for 5% of sales today, but Beijing is aiming for that figure to hit 40% by 2030. Back in 2001, Beijing drew up the 863 initiative to strengthen the competitiveness of China in the global economy. It invested a relatively small amount, about $130 million, into three new energy vehicle technologies, fuel cell, hybrid, and electric. These guided China's green vehicle development for the next 15 years. There's a technology race on renewable energy and electric cars that's emerging between the United States and China. Right now, China is ahead on electric cars because the government has had a very strong policy supporting electric cars now for a number of years. I've been going to China for about 25 years, and you, the changes are just amazing. When I first went to China, the streets were filled with swarms, swarms and swarms of bicyclists, almost in this graceful swimming thing as people were bicycling to work. All gone, just streets now jammed, and you can sit there in the longest traffic jams uh, I've ever been in, and that's just one side of a uh, of sign of the change. They realize that there's one global market where they cannot be competitive, they're too late, the traditional gasoline, petrol, powered car. But they see themselves, if they can get at the forefront on electric vehicles, and almost half the world's electric cars now are in China, that will give them a foundation to be very strong competitors in the global automobile market of the future, which they are not now. This technological leapfrogging means many of us haven't seen or even heard of some of China's biggest automakers. We delivered 2.1 million cars to the market globally and uh, we uh, achieved 50 billion US dollars revenue. Like so many other Chinese companies, Geely had grown into a behemoth long before it started to operate abroad. Now it owns Volvo, has a stake in Daimler and is listed internationally. 
Geely isn't selling as many cars as Tesla just yet, but it is able to launch bold new concepts in an environment that actively encourages innovation, such as its new rapid battery swap stations. We have the plan to build over 2,000 charging stations and battery swap stations in the next couple of years to allow more than 20,000 charging points. This is a technology Tesla didn't think Western countries were ready for. It's amazing, if you go back two decades, China was a tiny automobile market, one or two million cars a year. Now it's like 27 million cars a year, which is like 50% bigger than the US market. So that gives them a test bed uh, for promoting electric cars, which they're doing aggressively. It also means that the automobile makers of the world, and remember the automobile business is a global business, they may be focused on the United States, but they also want to sell electric cars and be competitive in China. China's vast domestic market, 400 million middle-class car buyers, means that major international car makers have to invest and compete there. Beijing may be able to take advantage of that to further its strategic ambition for clean tech dominance, but that's not to say it's a hard sell for foreign car companies. The city of Luzhou. Thanks to a green push by local authorities, it's effectively become the capital of the biggest EV market in the world. They basically have created uh, lanes in the city where the electric cars can go and like normal combustion engines can't. And the majority of these electric cars are three meters long, cost less than $5,000, and outsell Teslas. They've created uh, dedicated parking spaces that are half the size of normal parking spaces that can only be used by this. So you've created an environment where it's, it's an advantage in that city to have a Hongwan Mini EV. So it's a, it's a positive example of how to encourage usage uh, of, of products that drives, helps drive consumer uh, behavior. The cars are made by a Chinese company called Wulin in partnership with a very famous American company. General Motors. Once a symbol of American industrial might, General Motors has to now look outside the US for opportunity. China has become the company's biggest market and is by far the most strategically important. The Chinese consumer is very tech savvy. This means you've got a very fertile ground to try new things, to experiment, uh, and to get people to adopt new technology. Every car we make, we sell. Uh, and this is not regulation driven. This is pure customer demand that is driving the need uh, for us to supply that product to consumers. In China, electric car buyers can get subsidies worth thousands of dollars. In some cities, getting a parking permit for a conventional combustion engine car has become nearly impossible. At the end of 2020, the country had 1.68 million charging points for EVs. Compare that with 72,000 in the US at the end of 2019. The vast majority of Chinese driving habits and uh, actual miles driven or kilometers driven is in an urban environment, which obviously suits uh, the, the adoption of electric vehicles. If you look at the Hongwan Mini EV, uh, we have ranges of 170 kilometers and 120 kilometers. But for the vast majority of our consumers, that it's either a second car or it's a primary car in a real downtown area, that's adequate. Because of driving conditions and the charging of the structure mean that you've got a very high adoption rate and not so many barriers to, to adoption. There's a clear tipping point around the 250, 300 uh, mile mark in the US. That is because a lot of consumers in the US drive you know, city to city. Uh, so that's a big part of, uh, of life. That's a little different in China. 85% of miles driven are driven in a non-highway environment. The Chinese aren't just transforming the EV market. A government-led, top-down approach also rewrites the rules of innovation. In the Western conception, the entrepreneur is critical in the innovation process. It's the entrepreneur, the Bill Gates, the Jeff Bezos, and the financial incentive that innovation will deliver enormous wealth that's the catalyst for the innovation process. That's part of the picture, but as we're discovering in China, it's not the entire picture. A government which is willing to patiently 
pour resources, time, money, people into solving problems and pushing innovation forward can also deliver some impressive results. The majority of the cars GM sells in China are made in China, which means the company has to walk on eggshells to stay in Beijing's good graces. It represents the dilemma most foreign companies face in the country. To catch up in clean tech, there's a trade-off. My name is Joe Biden and I'm a car guy. Which is why investment in EV charging stations is part of President Biden's new $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan. You know, the president is concerned that China is far ahead of us in the electric vehicle market. And instead of producing the technologies of the future, we're importing them from somewhere else. It is time for that to shift around. Not everyone on Biden's team is alarmed, though. I would venture to guess that the vast majority of all patents and innovations in the clean tech space has been funded by the Department of Energy and by private sector players within the United States. They were commercialized largely, I would say, in Europe through the feed-in tariff programs and in China through their manufacturing prowess. But a lot of the technology really originated here in the United States. But I think if you were to think about what the most innovative electric vehicles are in the world, you'd think of Tesla. And I think when you think about who all of the players, including the Chinese players, want to emulate, it's American innovation. It's not Chinese innovation. The current lithium-ion battery technology, really no one believes that that current technology will be relevant in 2030. Whether it's the cathode or the anode or the electrolyte or the substrates, I think everyone sees a dramatic amount of innovation in the next generation of battery storage, which is what we're scaling up here in the United States. There are facets to China's success in clean tech that are problematic to say the least. Its booming solar industry has been accused of relying to some degree on forced labor, where systemic oppression of Muslim Uyghurs is an international human rights issue. China is also the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitter and is home to huge environmental problems, mainly thanks to its reluctance to rein in its massive coal industry. When severe air pollution swept across the country in the winter of 2013, Beijing tilted further towards green car policies. Over the past 30 days, the average air quality level in this city has registered as hazardous on the official scale. By 2019, the government had designed a world-beating system of regulatory targets which has required automakers to accelerate investment and sales of electric cars faster than they might have left to their own devices. All this has set China on course for 2030, where the country will have an outsized influence in this strategic industry with a big say over technical standards and terms of trade. The big question, the Chinese state-sponsored conception of capitalism worked really well when China was catching up, borrowing from, or some would say, stealing technologies from the rest of the world. Will it work so well when China has reached the technology frontier and needs to innovate through it? I think you could have two scenarios. One is it actually doesn't look too different. A lot more electric cars on the road. Traffic's still a really big problem. Uh, the other is uh, what I describe in the new map as auto tech, where you take electric cars, put it together with ride hailing, put it together with self-driving autonomous vehicles, and you have these very large fleets of cars self-driving that just come and pick people up, and people don't really identify with their car anymore. It's just a utility, a facility, and it's kind of moving in a very different way, and you don't have traffic jams because everybody is well coordinated. So it's uh, all these vehicles are tied together by software. So I think it's not a prediction of one or the other, but rather two scenarios. A lot depends upon the pace of technology, and I think a lot depends upon how this competition and interdependence at the same time between China and the United States plays out. Cutting-edge EVs rely on a lot of software and data for onboard navigation, charging, wireless updates, and remote diagnostics. That's a sensitive area given efforts in the US and Europe to restrain tech transfers to China and could damage development if not handled carefully. 
as China continues to grow and lead this industry, it will almost certainly have a bigger say in the outcome for everyone else.